Hey guys, what's up? Today, we have a ton of wine here. Unfortunately, this isn't going to be another wine tasting video. In today's video, I'm hoping to share with you a few tricks, a few tips, so that you can select your wine better. Now I know, I know, you're already using some of my wine recommendations in the past. Even more helpful, I know a lot of us are already using the Vivino app, but the thing is, I know this happened to you because it's happened to me a lot. I entered the wine store or maybe the supermarket and there's a wall of wine there. I'm ready to spend the next hour there picking wines based on what are the good recommendations. But it happens that the mobile data coverage for that store is just not strong enough. Or maybe if it's not mobile data, maybe you're running low on battery. What do you do in these instances? In this video, I'm sharing with you three tips so that you're not completely dependent on your phone on how you can select your next bottle of wine just by looking at the label. But before that, if you haven't subscribed to my channel already, please do consider subscribing so that you can hear from me in the future regarding wine and other topics that I'm covering in this channel. Alright, so what are these three things? Number one, the more specific the bottle of wine is regarding its origin, the better. I wanted to show a few things with you here. And excuse me guys, some of these are already finished because these are just in my collection. So for my first example for a lack of specificity would be this bottle from Gallo family. So Gallo is the largest producer of wine in the United States. But this bottle is labeled just as California. California is pretty big. There are a lot of wine regions in California. Just having the state there is not specific enough, unfortunately. Your wine is actually more special and carefully curated, carefully put together if it's coming just from one region. I like to phrase it as, as like beef. If you buy a nice cut of steak, you know, a ribeye or a strip loin, you know that that's the section that it's coming from. Whereas if it's ground beef, it might be coming from different places, from chunks, from briskets, and so on and so forth. You don't really want your bottle to be coming from too many regions because it's just going to be a hodgepodge, a mix. And this one actually, it says in the back, Modesto, California. But unfortunately, when you look it up, Modesto, California, it's actually their corporate office. So if you look up their website, they are situated at Modesto. So unfortunately, Gallo, the state alone is not specific enough. And since we have a California wine here, I featured this a few videos ago. So this is from Gnarly Head. And right away, it says that it's from Lodi. This one is specific enough to say. And I also featured this before. This is Red Peak, and it says that it's from Southeastern Australia. If you check your geography, you would find out that there's no state called Southeastern Australia. This term was actually coined and put together by different uh, winemakers, different vineyards. So it's a collective term, but the term Southeastern Australia actually touches on five different states, five of only six states in Australia. Unfortunately, that's not specific enough. The equivalent would be like the United States naming their wines West Coast Wines. Uh, I have here one that's not open. We have here Terry Estate River Retreat. And this one is from Murray Darling. It's clearly indicated that there's an office, Trentham, but Murray Darling is where the wine's coming from. And that's what you want to get from your wines. That specificity. All right, so number two, we're still kind of talking about location. With old world wines, you're actually gonna come across subcategories uh, next to the location, like this Tuscan wine. It says that Indicazione Geografica Tipica. And this finished up bottle of Trebbiano. Um, it also says Denominazione di Origine Controllata. So what am I talking about here, guys? So the old world producing regions, they actually have a few of these regulating bodies that ensure quality, that they are, are up to standards. Actually, if you want to know more about those regulating bodies, that's a separate video in itself. But to go quickly, in France, there's the AOC and the IGP. For Italy and Spain, there's the DOC and the DOCG. And these regulatory bodies can really help you determine what bottle you're picking up because they are already enforcing a standard before those wines even leave their country or even their region. So that's number two. And for number three, I'm actually cautious of wine bottles that have too many awards listed on them. 
I feel like the winemakers are trying to be too impressive, so there's really no way to verify these awards. Don't get me wrong, this bottle of wine is actually quite good. As with anything, there's an exception to every rule. You should be cautious of um, winemakers of bottles that flaunt too much awards because if they were too good to begin with, they won't really need to flaunt it. So yeah, just be careful with that. Alright, so those are the three tips. So again, just to review. So number one, specificity of location. Again, it's best if it's just not the state, but it's a specific region. And don't settle for, you know, a, an umbrella California wine because again, that can be coming from all over the place. Number two, uh, it helps to have those governing bodies just to assure you of some standard that's been enforced. And number three, be careful with the awards that some of these bottles boast of. Again, as with most things, these aren't hard and fast rules. There are still, of course, exceptions. Even if you are mindful of these three things, it might still be a bad bottle of wine. And of course, there's never an assurance. You could also get a good bottle of wine, even if it doesn't adhere to these things. But these are generally tips that may help you most of the time. Alright, thanks for watching. If you've liked this video, please don't forget to comment, like, and again, consider subscribing if you haven't already. And I'll see you again next time. Cheers, guys!